All right, so now what? Drying. It's very yeah. simple, right? Don't yeah. buff it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want to rub on it. You guys do the old uh, lay it out, right? Yep. One of these deals? Yep, we sure do. Just kind of lay it, drag it across. You do one of these and then... No, nope, I just drag it across the surface. It should get the majority of... Well, uh, what about all the extra water that's still on here? And you must be doing something wrong. Mine's coming out dry over Mine's here. Mine's not working. <laughs> Let me see this. Okay, all right. And then you can do one of these. Yep. Yeah, at this point, just getting it dry. And once again, the difference between a maintenance wash and something getting ready to be polished, mm -hmm. we don't have to take all that extra time um, like we would on a maintenance wash. So, Well, plus we're dealing with 100% DI, DI water yep. as well. So, Yep. So in this case, you know, I'm just going to be a little bit more quick about the process, just getting water off. Then what I'll do is I'll, I'll work some compressed air into that whole process too, mm -hmm. because all those areas we want to tape, water is going to sit in there and the tape will never stick. Right. Yep. I'm so happy to have white back in my life. I love white. Gives us an opportunity to really showcase our polishing skills, right? That's right. Any goof can polish white. You know, we're having the conversation about getting everything off of the surface. Is there any kind of wax or whatever on it? This is a time when you can judge that a little bit. Because right now, as we're dragging the towel across, I still feel pretty slick. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, that kind of helps give us some direction on what extra prep steps we're going to want to take to make sure all that's off of there. What about using a more basic, like chemically basic soap while we're washing? Yeah, you can do that. There's, there's some that are like the old chemical guy citrus wash. Yep, I used to use the heck out of that stuff. Um, I actually just got it. Like I had them remake it for me. So. Yeah, you can have uh, have some of that set aside specifically for prep washes when you're getting ready to do uh, do polishing. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's really heavy on the surface, that's not going to take uh, all of it out of there but at least it helps break it down a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, and that's always been my thought is like, you know, if it help if it helps a little bit, it can't yep. hurt. Right. You know. Right, exactly. I used to get that stuff by the gallons. Okay. Now, if we're looking, you know, these different areas where we know that we're going to be taping, that's where we want to go in with some compressed air. Mm -hmm. Get all that standing water uh, out of there and just make our life easier. Because what happens too is once you start polishing, all that vibration, vibration water starts, starts sending water up and right. it just really affects uh, your polishing process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why generally, no, we don't have that luxury today, but the generally I would let it, I'd blow it all out and then let it dry that's overnight. It. Yep. And that yep. usually by the time I come back in the morning, there's less of that. I mean, having to rush to go grab a towel to... Right. And then when I'm doing it, you know, just... So what are we going to do? Um, should we clean out the jams and all that stuff yep. too? Yeah. If uh, we can we can open that up, we can clean out uh, the jams. Now, when we're all done, we're going to clean them uh, again. So in most cases, you don't have to go to crazy lengths to make sure everything is out of there. But we're going to be wrapping a lot of film. Yeah. So we want to make sure all that stuff is clean as possible. We'll still... After we polish this, we'll go out and we're going to do a complete rinse off on it again before we get into film wrapping. Gotcha. But then with, uh, with your air, you know, if anybody is, is thinking about doing this at home, you want to make sure that you've got, you know, some kind of rubber tip on the end. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get it too close to the surface, um, you know, so you don't want to scratch it. And then I'll just do it with a towel just to try to catch it also. <laughs> I can't wait to get my air compressor finally. Yeah. 
And then with these two, if you get a, a big compressor, um, you want to be careful about your hearing. I mean, typically in yeah. here, we always wear ear protection when we're using this in a drying method because it uh, produces a lot of sound. Yeah. I want to save my ears for uh, Canon for the, stereo. Yeah, for the longest time, I messed with uh, the leaf blower and I didn't yeah. wear anything. And then finally somebody said, look, dude, you got to, because you're holding it up. Yep. And I realized, man, yeah, this is not smart. Right. Usually exactly. you figure that out when you're like 40 years old. Yep. That's so, yeah. Yep. So luckily I figured it out at 35. towel on the jams do you yep. have yep. any preference there no nope. we'll switch them out I'm gonna deal with all the glass the tinter will deal with all that. Yep. I remember before I started before I started doing any of this stuff I was just trying to learn how to detail using El Grio's garage yep and I called some guy who now I'm a, you know, friends with Brian Guy, who's AO Wheels in in, uh, in Orlando, yep. and I said, hey, I'd like to shadow you. you know, I'd like to, can I pay you, we'll do my car. I had an 892 M3 at, this, at the time, I used a boar's hair brush, I scratched the whole thing up, <laughs> and I was using Griot's polish. Remember their four step, it was yep. horrible, it didn't yeah, do yeah. anything. It was, yeah. I went all the way down to polish one, did nothing. Yeah. And I called him and said, look, I'd really like to become an expert in this, can I pay you? I'll do most of the work, but just to shadow you. And he's like, eh, yeah, I don't know, I'm not really into all that. I wasn't videoing or anything yeah. at the time. This is probably 2010. And now here I am today, we're doing this. It's amazing. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens, uh, happens so quickly. You know, once, I mean, really with, with this, once you kind of get the bug for proper detailing, um, I mean, most people, they dive in the deep end. Yeah. And, uh, and that's always been my, and, and I think you and I share this in that, you know, when you go narrow and deep on things, you know, there's, there's, there's just a commonality there that a lot of people, you know, the share and by like, you know, you put yourself out there and you build an esoteric, you yeah. know, or a obsessed garage happens, you know, there's a lot of work and a lot of effort that yeah. comes in it, but be the beauty of the obsession for things. And I think you're headed down this path with yep. audio now, right? Yep. Like again. Yep. Yeah, see, I could see myself doing that again someday <laughs> too. <clears throat> audio and cars, right? Yeah. Uh, inexpensive hobbies. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's funny you're talking about <clears throat> people who are just kind of enthusiasts and, and want to learn at a much higher level. You know, we've had a lot of people come through the school. Yeah. They're not detailers, they don't plan on being detailers. They're, uh, they're just wanting to take care of their cars uh, the right way. You know, the, our last class, we had a heart surgeon uh, here at right. the class. Uh, he just has got, got an older Porsche Targa and, and, and wants to... Wants to care for it properly. To, yep, and wants to know the, the right way to do it. And Yeah, I mean, if I, if I had known, you know, so that was, then after that I went to... Uh, so I, I called Brian and asked him if I could do that and he was like, ah, I don't know. And, and, uh, and, and, and then I went, eventually I went to Mike Phillips school, mm -hmm. you know, which is, you know, very, a lot of the guys there, not, not very many professionals, but that was a great first, you know, foray in the training. And yep. then I came here and then I went to, uh, just to see more, uh, like optimums is more production based yep. just to pick up a few tips, like using a razor blade. Like I would have blown my mind, you yep. know, in a car and just some you know, neat things. And, you know, and you just pick up tips from all over the place. But yeah, I mean, I would encourage anybody to come here and I tell, I'm always sending people here, like yep. if you're into it, you know, it's, shoot, you'll save it money on the product. Yeah. You know, this is not a sales pitch. This right, is just right. a fact that you'll end up saving more money on product than you spent on the actual training. It's, yeah. yeah, that, that and, and you know, going over a tremendous amount of information. Yeah, and saving yourself a lot of pain, even if you haven't done it ever, like yeah. you don't have any skills. You'll you'll pick up so much and save yourself so many, you know, like burning through the top of the door handle or something yep. like I've done, and or you know using a boar's head brush and scratching the whole surface of the car. I mean, just save yourself a lot of that trouble. Right. Now, what what that does, that kind of training, that uh, 
it basically buys a learning curve. Yeah. Because you know, during that learning curve, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's a lot of time. You know, it's yeah. like you, you and I are busy people. I don't have trouble uh, making the investment on something to, that we can learn right now. Right. As opposed to trying to take the time to figure it all out. But even, you know, even if you're young, I mean, I think you'd be better off, even if you're not well off, I think you'd be better off maybe saving, you know, maybe not buy as many products, you know, hold off on buying that pressure washer or whatever. Yep. And, and come get trained, it'll save you a lot of time and pain in the future. Yep. Now, what would you use on this plastic? Which plastic here? This, yeah. Uh, for cleaning, maintaining, protecting, all the above, or? Yeah. Well, if it's something that, that is just kind of quick down and dirty, you know, I use something like uh, uh, Polish Angel Engine. Mm -hmm. because it's made for like treating plastics and cleaning and, and add some protection on it. Is that kind but, of like an APC with a... Uh, if it, yes and no. I mean, it kind of works the same, uh, but it's nice for dressing areas like this too, mm -hmm. and it, it makes it easier to maintain afterwards. On mine, you know, all this stuff we coated um, mm -hmm. in, in a plastic-specific coating. That way, cleanup, maintenance remains easy. It's just wiping it down at that point. I don't have to do anything extra to it. Gion trim. Uh, yep, Gion trim, Kamikaze ISM coat. Um, mm. Any of those uh, items, you know, work really well on these kind of plastics. And here's our. And, th and then I'm not using really any kind of secondary chemicals. There's our $180 GT3 RS sticker. Yeah, wonderful. Luckily, I didn't have to pay for that one. Car's dry. Now we inspect, or do we prep wipe down first? Uh, that's what I would do is we'd go through and uh, prep wipe down or use like a Spies Hecker body shop solvent. You know, this still feels really, really slick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once we get all that prep to get everything off the surface, then we'll go in, we'll take a close look, we'll take some measurements, take some readings with uh, the DOI meter, uh, see where we stand on it all. And, I don't think they've slopped the clothing coating on this, do you? I wouldn't think so. Yeah. And I wouldn't think that the previous owner had it done. You know, if if somebody put coating over top of all those um, yeah the sanding and sanding marks, that yeah, wouldn't be the that. brightest thing. It's yeah, it's pretty rough. I mean, I don't even understand how you could. That you guys probably can't see it on camera, but it's like it's like there's it almost looks like you forgot to wipe the polish off. It's that bad. Yeah, yeah. You'll get real big, hazy patches, usually yeah. about this big. And you know, what happens in a manufacturing environment? You know, they'll find like a dirt nib or something in the paint afterwards. Mm -hmm. They'll go in and sand that spot real quick, Just, they have and then the factory gives them about 15 seconds to try to polish it out. Well, right. Laws of physics don't cease to exist there. <laughs> It needs more time uh, to work. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, what happens at the factory, you know, it's going to be more of a filling capacity type of uh, polish that they're using, so they might not see it that much then. Mm, and the yeah. paint continues to cure; that starts to wear off. Yeah, over time, they'll start to, to come out, and you really notice them. Because the factory doesn't put any wax or anything on the cars, do they? Correct, they do not. Which, yeah, I, I mean, part of it's for gassing off, right? Or the paint to cure and right. you know, release the solvents to the yeah. surface. And, and you can tell that, uh, that these paints continue to go through changes for a while afterwards because on Porsches we've seen it a bit, you know, they, they put the, the plastic covering on it to protect it while it's being shipped over here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not laid down perfectly flat and you can remove that and you can find where the, the, the adhesives in there have distorted the clear coat. Mm. Uh, it's going to be really tough to see on a color like a white, but you get a black or darker gray sure. or something that's get pretty, it under pretty good easy to see. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so those are the, some of the different kind of defects that, that we look for um, when we have a, a new car come in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, each manufacturer has some of its own commonalities. Uh, you know, we're going to find Aston Martin's going to have a tremendous amount of sanding marks. Mm. Ferrari, it's got a little everything, bit of everything. Right? Sanding marks and swirl well, marks. Well, they're doing a lot of stuff by hand right after the <clears throat> yeah, fact. Yeah, it, there, there's a lot of, of, of post-touching it. And yeah. we know that some of their cars, if it's, a, if it's a special color, if it's a striped car, it goes to a secondary facility. Mm. So you've got somebody outside Even the factory people, that's, yeah, yeah, th that works on them. 
So here when we're working on this prep and, and we're looking for different kind of uh, defects, you know, we'll, we'll even pay attention. Do we see compound in the cracks to know that it's been worked on heavily in that, uh, mm, that yeah. area? Yep. We're looking for, for sandy marks uh, like these. Then we want to take some measurements around those areas to see how far that, uh, that they've gone uh, down. And we can usually assume there's going to be some handling marks, some, uh, some light swirls, some light scratching. Mm -hmm. You're just going to find that uh, in, in newer cars, some manufacturers worse than others. Uh, so that's all part of that inspection process that, that we're going through. All right, so if we're going to use a, a solvent on here, how do you know, just through experience, how do you know you're not using too caustic of a, of a solvent? Well, what, what we use, there's only really one product we use, so it's a Spies Hecker 7010 body shop solvent, mostly um, to remove uh, silicones off it. You know, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll use that in a body shop to strip everything off the surface so it's a safe environment to do painting. Mm -hmm. um, that is not something that's going to damage uh, the finish it's designed specifically for it gotcha. it's when the guy at home or in the the the, the dealership or it's the detail center <laughs> yeah they're 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 thinking all of a sudden they're chemists and they know better and they want to you know start using real heavy stuff on it or using brake cleaner to try to clean the things mm -hmm. off um that's when you need to to uh, worry about it you know here we're always trying to use the least aggressive method necessary because mm -hmm. the last thing we want to do is Pay to have your car repainted. Uh, yeah, I'm for you. on that. Yeah. yeah, and then all the, it's not even the repaint part, it's the, it's the now it's tainted. The, yes, now, exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the, the tricky part to that. Yep. So, yeah, we'll grab, uh, we'll grab some prep to start with and okay. uh, com do a complete prep wipe on this, and then we can uh, get to inspecting it a little bit more closely. Sweet. That's the part I'm looking forward to. What happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. To the floor. Foot to the floor. 